I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector News Podcast, and I am on location at the Current Trends in Mining Finance Conference put on by the New York chapter of the SME, and I have joining me across from me, and we're on the same continent, uh, my good friend Kai Hoffman from all the way over from Germany to come speak at this conference. Welcome, Kai. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. So you gave a presentation last night about the uh, the current state of the mining finances and uh, things still look pretty bleak from your uh, presentation. Are you feeling bleak or are you starting to feel a little optimistic given commodity prices? Let's call it bleakish. You know, let's add a bit of a positive touch to it. And we're, we're trading at a much higher gold price, silver price, copper price. So everything's looking more positive. Sentiment, I think, is starting to change slightly. We do see, a, 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 I would say it's like, what, what's the right word? A bit of an uptick maybe in financing activity but not by much. Like investor sentiment is still subdued, but I do see more financings being sent around. Smaller companies are starting to feel more comfortable raising money. Also, share prices have appreciated a little bit. So companies that were originally worried about dilution might be able to issue shares now at uh, or less shares than they might have had to before. So that gives them a bit of confidence to go out now. A lot of the companies also need to raise for their summer and drill program. So they're being saved by the higher gold price, silver price, and copper price environment. And that, that is putting a positive spin on things. Again, it's not we're not anywhere near uh, extreme euphoria. Um, we're headed there, but we're still in early innings. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, yeah, like I look at my own portfolio. It's most of the stocks are up a few pennies other than, you know, things like Osisco mining and, and such that you would expect to be early movers anyways. Um, but they're not the ones particularly chasing after this market. Do you get the sense that the investor sentiment is coming back into the market and that the miners themselves uh, have a fear of missing out on a higher price for the placement? Or is it they're not confident enough yet that there's investors to take the placement? I think it's the second part. Like The investors are still skittish. Do they believe in $2,400 gold, I think, is the big question, because that move has been fast. It has been violent. How sustainable is it? Where will it go? I think all the technical experts agree there might be a floor now at $2,000, maybe $2,100 easily. Some of the experts call maybe for a bit of a pullback, which is probably quite healthy in, in a massive bull market that we could be or are entering right now. And a pullback to $2,200, for example, would be healthy. But that would still make the junior mining investors extremely skittish and nervous, despite the bigger companies generating record free cash flows and actually churning some some money out and money over. So um, that's what we're looking at. We had a really slow start to the year in terms of financings so far. And we're, we're chatting here on May 21st, and I think my data is up to May 17th, I believe. We've only raised $1.35 billion within our coverage universe. Uh, compared to $4.6 billion last year for the whole year, we're at a very, like, we're not going to run a rate that might not match last year's output or financing. In, collected financings. Having said that, we might get saved by the higher pri uh, metal price environment. That could change, of course, over the summer. And um, I expect the summer to be busier. But uh, so far, it has been a slow start to the year. And uh, we might see our rally over the summer, but gold needs to hold up, copper needs to hold up, and uh, silver for sure as well. No, definitely. And I, I agree with your saying is that even if we had like a modest pullback percent-wise from where we are to 2200, the gold marketplace is uh, very price sensitive, and they would completely freak out over that. Like I remember, twenty two years ago, Kai, when I first started doing this, gold was trading at two hundred and eighty dollars an ounce. And if I told them then it was a thousand dollars, they'd have been dancing in the aisles at at the conferences I was at. And then if I told them not only that, it's going to be like twenty four hundred dollars an ounce, but you're not going to be happy about it. And they would have looked at me like I had lobsters growing out of my ears. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're both interviewing Rob McEwen tomorrow. And I'm really curious because I haven't seen him yet here if he's going to dance through the hallways here of this conference. Because he's one who also predicted $3,000 gold and everybody thought he was crazy. I remember the Twitter conversations and calling him out for it. Now, Citibank said $3,000 is a possibility within the next 6 to 18 months. That is a massive change of sentiment and a massive change in the gold price environment. We all know the macro factors that have led to this scenario. We don't need to go into details, but uh, I want I want to see him dance through the hallways here because uh, it must feel good. 
Um, I think we both should uh, offer to be dance partners for for Rob McEwen. I think, uh, you know, if someone puts that on video, I think that'll go viral in our industry. We're dancing on three thousand dollar gold. That's 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 pretty funny. But yeah, you're right. Like he, you know, at the time he made that statement, it it seemed very audacious, and there wasn't a whole lot of people jumping on that bandwagon. It seems a little less so now with Citibank and others that are starting to look and go, yeah, this is, you know, this could very well be possible. Well, you're pushing me down the macro, you know, the macro rabbit hole here. We're we're seeing it right now. We do still have recession worries in the U.S. Um, geopo- geopolitics are pulling in here. The U.S. debt situation. There's so many factors that are weighing or pushing the gold price higher. We're even seeing ETF buying right now. Like this week, we've seen over $500 million dollars flow into gld another 190 million into gldm which is a little brother in mini shares um so more of a smaller cap uh, product for that so there's a lot of money flowing into the sector right now driven based on macro events the bond bond deals are falling uh, the 10 years down to 4.4 percent right now almost touched five so the market is trying to tell you something gold rallying bond yields dropping what, what's happening yeah, no, definitely. Uh, but let's uh, let's spin ourselves back into the micro world then. So far, it's been pretty dismal for the miners to raise money and capital. Um, as we're both very cognizant of the of the financings that are out there, um, there hasn't been a whole lot of financings. The miners haven't even been, you know, making an ask. Um, we're heading into the summer drill program. Are they? tapped up and had the ability to drill without asking or are we going to start to see a flurry of activity now as everyone desperately tries to get the money to to plow into the field we we got to be careful when we talk about negative sentiment because it is a really bifurcated market so the bigger companies the later stage developers and companies that might be able to deliver maybe a resource or a pa or pfs post their the current season those are the companies that are getting financed. They're getting money right now. The grassroots explorers are still struggling unless you have a rock star management team or you have a project right next to Barrick, for example, that uh, shows clearly the extension of the asset, meaning you got to have a lot of geological perspectivity. The hopes and dreams don't still don't get financed, right? Um, the companies you mentioned, some of them still have money or had money, so they didn't have to go out to market. Uh, I've seen quite a few emails this week come in, only just the last week, actually, asking for cash, meaning, okay, we've initiated a financing. Smaller companies as well that are daring now to come out, trying to raise 1.3 million, 1.5 million. I hate those financings because they really don't move the needle. They might pay for a geophysics program, but it doesn't really create that value that I want to see from a company that really moves the needle, maybe making a new discovery, right? Um, Some of those companies will also have smaller tool programs over the summer. Uh, Instead of wanting to drill maybe 20,000 meters, they might do three to five which is, again, not great, uh, really slows down news flow, has to be focused. Uh, I'm not going to use the word director special here, but uh, they might put some holes in where they know they're going to get good results. So we got to be cautious of that as investors and pay attention to that. No, no, absolutely. And, you know, it's there's what the company and the market or not the market, but the, the directors may want to do. And then there's what they can afford to do. And it has been a challenging market for quite some time, but um, let's let's look forward here to the fall. Let's say some of these companies can actually drill a little bit. Um, they can start to move the needle and move their projects forward. Do you see there being a more healthy environment this fall that may get our financings back up to last year's level, even though it's lagging poorly behind it uh, early on in the year? And And in fairness, like the normal market raising period of January, February, you know, you and I both know that we could have fired a cannon into that marketplace and not hit anybody that was selling any any placements. It was deader than dead. But, you know, the market started to move after PDAC. Uh, the usual PDAC curse hasn't seemed to been on this year. And on the macro level, you know, I know we're in, you know we're going to talk micro, but on a macro level, this is a counter seasonality trend right now, because normally you would see the golden and all the commodities be ticking downward from the end of March to where we are today. Selling may go away; doesn't seem to be happening. So. What what do you see for the fall in the micro space? Actually, right now is a fantastic time to finance because we still have that four month hold period in Canada, unless you do a life financing, which is a bit of an exemption where you don't where you automatically get free trading paper. 
But if you add the four months to now, we're recording this on May 21st. So that's end of September. You'll have free trading paper. So ideally, you have the full summer season to produce some results to backfill um, those, those shares coming free trading. So I'm really looking forward to the fall. I think the conferences, uh, maybe Precious Metals and Beaver Creek, I think uh, should be really, really exciting because companies are coming off their drill programs. They might be having to raise more money again for the fall. That's fine. But I'm looking forward to an exciting year. It's like we've seen the trickle down now. Uh, gold has been at a higher level for a while. It didn't just happen from, we didn't move from 1,200 to 2,400 just yesterday. So the investors had time to digest, start to build some trust into that move. And it, we're seeing it. As I mentioned, it's like this is the first week where I'm actually getting inundated with emails from companies saying, hey, we're raising. Have you seen this? We want you on board, right? This is the first time in 12 months I've seen that, maybe longer, where I've seen like three, four financings hit my inbox. That, uh, that hasn't happened in a while. So I'm looking forward to a fun summer, actually. Yeah, I, I am as well. And I always look... At these markets, you know, you have on the upside, you always have that over ebullience when it's time, you know, the smart people know it's time to head for the doors because everybody else at the party is too drunk and they're going to pass out soon. Um, but there's the lower end of the market that we we don't talk about a whole lot, and that's the capitulation. And even last fall when it was happening, you know, Beaver Creek uh was not looked upon very positively by by investors and everybody that was there and a lot of the fall shows after beaver creek there was a couple that were on the schedule got canceled there were uh others that kind of went with uh, uh very scant attendance um did we see capitulation in the fall and now we're starting to see the the result of the upward movement we saw capitulation six weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago, also from a corporate side. So the companies were able to finance back in 2021, 2022, they were able to fill up their coffers and now they're dry. I run a conference in Germany and the behavior of some of the companies and how they acted and how difficult it was to put on the show told me we're at the bottom. Like that was a clear call. It was the first time I went up on stage May 3rd and said, this is the bottom. Like I might be off by a few days, don't get me wrong, but uh, it, it felt absolutely terrible just based on the experience we had putting that conference together. Companies that wanted to come out said, no, nah, we don't have the budget for it. No, board says no, no marketing. That was the bottom. Now we're being saved by higher gold prices, and that is really changing. Like the tide is turning. Uh, we're really seeing it. We're seeing higher share prices uh, in, in those companies. They will be financing at higher levels. I've seen companies that traded at $0.04. Cents, they're at $0.23 cents today. And that has only happened in the last three months, four yeah. months, right? So quite fast moves. And a company that was at four cents is more likely to raise at 23 cents. And I hope they raise some money now uh, at that level, personally. Right. And it's at the only the beginning of the move. We're not the end phase. We're far from it. So we're, we're going to have a blast here. Perfect. If people want to follow your work, how do they do so? Uh, at JR Mining Guy on Twitter. Uh, also run a YouTube channel called Soar Financially and uh, hosting the Gold Newsletter channel on YouTube together with our good friend Brian London, uh, Gold Newsletter on YouTube. So you can find me there. Uh, DMs are open. Feel free to reach out. Wonderful. Thanks very much for joining me, Kai. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you uh, on the road here again uh, sooner than later. The Prospector News Podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.